Go ahead. Yeah? Yep. So um, before we go forward into offense, I just want to illustrate a point I was talking to you guys about this. Um, I think this will be helpful for everyone. That I think sometimes the instinct is to not go as low. At, like I said, I see a lot of people when they practice this kind of hesitate to go super low in that Superman mount. Like I said, to go low towards the feet. I think maybe feeling like they'll lose control. And I just want to demonstrate something very interesting. Is like, can I get you on your back? Is like I can control this position now. This you wouldn't go from the mount to this because the mount is superior to this. But just to point something out, let's say you just extend your legs straight. Is like if I literally just figure four Jimmy's knees down here, right? Move around, please. It's like this sucks. He cannot. Like I don't say he can't get out of this, but this is a really debilitating position. Case is nice and familiar. Yeah. Yeah. This is also, uh, for those of you that like MMA, this is, uh, if you're ever watching, I know Kevin, we talked about it. Khabib and Mega Madoff, man, this whole jiu-jitsu game. Um, Tony, can I have you circle around over there? It's based on getting this. So to answer your question, what Khabib will do from here is if he gets that, looks like isolated enough, he'll just start threatening this double knee bar on this person. Ugh. Yeah, and like, <laughs> he'll almost get it. Like if you watch the Conor McGregor fight, he almost double knee barred him. Because yeah. what'll happen is, it, Jimmy's best bet to get out of this is to get to his tailbone, and you come up to both hands. Get your tailbone up to, meaning like uh, sit straight up, like yep, and pull both hands on the floor, and then scoop straight back, right? So that's like his best logical place out of it. But if he does that, so I get the crisscross, if he comes up to his elbow, his hands like that, right, and he squares up with me, now I can just start bombing on top of his legs and keep getting lower and threatening his right. So he comes up to an elbow. So then, boom, you force them down to their nose. Now in an MMA scenario, boom, you're here. And at this point, they will do anything to protect that face, which will give me the back now. And that's basically what Khabib does to everybody. Is that exact sequence. So the knee bar is there, but it's more like super low. But the point is, as I demonstrated there, guys, that double knee control is really powerful. So I don't have to worry about getting too low. Worst case scenario, just straight find your feet around the knees if you feel like you're losing. With that being said, let's talk about some offense. So, let me turn your back. Now, uh, let me get your head facing the camera. Perfect. Great. Swift. <laughs> so, we've gotten to this point where I've isolated the head. I'm here, right? I'm looking. So I chop the feet. I'm low. I connect, right? I'm gonna be nice to Jimmy, but imagine I'm sprawl. Okay. What I am looking for is to find a situation where my head. Let me get this out of the way real fast. Hold on. Where my head can find this pocket, right? Honestly, you, you two probably want to be over here. Uh, yeah. If his hand is in the way, here's the thing: is as I look, now I'll be heavy for a second. It's like move around, this bridge and buck, right? Boom. Keep moving. Thank you. It's like he's gonna eventually have to move that arm. That's gonna be un. It's gonna be useless to him up here to to getting free. So I'm waiting for this moment right here to dip down. Okay. What I'm looking to do here right now. So we'll just keep this out of play for now. Yep. Is let's just give ourselves the worst case scenario. Jim's looking at me, right? And my head's here. If I put my head to the floor, Jim's not looking at me anymore. And then I'm back down. Look at me now. Right? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Once I own that pocket, like even if he starts looking at me, I don't have to be a dick about this. I don't have to like headbutt him or whatever. Just go down low and I just turn his head with my head. When I'm dead. Or down low again. Like, look at that. I'm just wedging in there. From here, my post hand is getting inside. All I want here, guys, do me a favor. Everybody feel your neck. Feel this hard carotid sort of knot like like cord right here. And then feel your throat. You feel that soft tissue right between the two? Mm -hmm. That's where my pinky knuckle goes. So if you take your pinky knuckle and put it right over there, you should feel that. Where that choke is. You should be able to literally take this pinky knuckle. Put it in that soft tissue, kind of push it up into your throat, and you should feel that choke. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. That's where my, my choke is going. So again, my hand, chop. My head finds the pocket, moves his head out of the way, pinky knuckle goes in. So, uh, Tony, can you see what my hands are doing? Yeah, or I can come in. But... You can go a little closer, too. Wherever you think is the best angle. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, what I want to think about with this choke is a couple of factors. I'm going to have two things working towards finishing this. I already have this bar. This is more like, I'm not, I mean, you do push down on this, 
But this the pushing down is almost like one of the least, it's one of the minimal aspects of it. There are two main facets that put this in use. Number one is that my bicep is against his carotid artery on the other side. And number two is as his head keeps getting lifted up, right? And I squeeze. Once I have the fist in there, that puts everything together. So it's the bicep against the carotid artery on the other side, like flexing, and his head being picked up. That really puts this choke over the top, right? So all together, I was here, I own this pocket, my fist goes in, right? I find like that spot. And then what I'm gonna do here, guys, imagine my head's down, I just want Tony to be able to see it, is my hand is gonna walk up my thumb. You guys see that? So I started low towards my elbow, and I just keep walking my hand up. From here, I stay glued, and then I just flex everything. It's a very simple choke. It does not require, like Nash Jimmy, it does not require a lot of pressure to get, like, start strangling. Mm -hmm. Right? So if we go all the way to the top, let's see, we're here, I chopped, shoot low, crisscross, I'm here, maybe he's bucking around, trying to do different stuff, and then I wait for that moment that I, I can get this, and then I'm turning his head away. From here, fist goes in, grab him over my wrist, start walking my hand up my thumb. If, let's say, the shoulder is over the face. Sometimes if the shoulder's over the face, you might not quite get the choke. Sometimes you'll get it, mm. right? What I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna throw his head like up, uh, like I'm like, I'm, like uh, Michael Jackson holding that baby over the balcony, right? And then I come back, and then I finish. So you see how I like shot my shoulder low? You okay, bud? Yeah, man. I shot my shoulder low, and then I came back under the chin. That's what I'm looking to make happen. So, let me get your cheese. Just a little bit away. So I'm here, right? And we'll just go right to the spot. Boom, boom, I'm here. And then I'm waiting for this moment that my head can fill this space. Go ahead and look right at me, right? And like really keep your chin tucked, right? I'm just using my head to turn his head. You see that? It's not that, it's not, because like if you think of it like this, is like look at your shoulder. This is a really good lever to turn someone's head, like the very end line of their face. Does that make sense? Like if you picture this like, you know, like a door. This is like the like the nose area is like the door handle. So and the brows are kind of the door handle. So if you look at your shoulder, it's pretty easy to just catch the brow and turn his head. Where I go back, if I were to try to like turn his head by the ear, that would be much harder, right? So I'm taking this sort of blunt side of the back of my head and catching his brow and turning him. And what that does too is it kind of makes him look over my shoulder. So you notice like if you guys were to see now, his chin is over top my bicep now, right? And then I go back and I can keep doing that. Fist finds that soft tissue, right? From here, I just walk up my wrist. And then when I have it, I just flex everything. If let's say the shoulder was out of position, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold my arms up like, like Michael Jackson holding blanket, right? And then come back and I flex. Let me get the... Get the finish. Mm. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. That motion, you know. Yeah. I guess you know I could go with Mufasa. That would have been like. Oh, I like how you were. I think Michael Jackson never was whatever. Like yeah. <laughs> right. Does that make sense, guys? Yes, sir. Excellent. Part of what we got. One, two, three. Hiya.